Commission, which is an international human resources services organization, which is focused exclusively on the Chinese market. Robert has a very strong background of 14 years in international recruitment. He actually took a Chinese operation over a course of nine years from just four people to a multi-city operation with over 100 people. And in 2009, he established RMG Selection, believing that in order to be successful, you really have to use best practices and respect the Chinese communications preferences and values. And the success of RMG now, with over 70 staff, proves that. So ladies and gentlemen, here to talk a little bit about direct marketing and email, help me welcome Mr. Robert Parkinson. You might wonder, why is a headhunter talking to you? That might be a question in your mind. And I'd like to start my presentation to you by just clarifying what exactly um, headhunters or recruiters are, and certainly specifically to my company, uh, what they do. Okay. So, this may be your typical um, mental image of a headhunter. Mr. Slick, with a big Rolodex of contacts, who knows everyone in a, a specific niche market. And you know what, actually there may be some truth in that, but in order to make a business out of it, and in order to make a brand uh, that's worth something out of it, you need a lot more than that. So, at RMG Selection, we try, and I do say try because we don't always succeed, but we try and run our business with military uh, precision. What do I mean by that? I mean really emphasizing, not so much emphasizing particular individuals, but emphasizing systems and processes and proprietary business information, IT systems, training, all of that good stuff that we all talk about a lot, but don't spend very much time doing a lot of the time. So, there we go. If you meet Sophie here, my marketing colleague, she's responsible for this very colourful presentation. Why are we trying to do this? Well, in a professional services business, what you're looking to produce is results which are re repeatable, predictable, uh, repeatable, predictable results. And actually, that's prob it's probably the most difficult uh, business to do, uh, to, to get predictable results in. Because you're dealing with people. Everything is about a person. So this is why we have these systems in place. And direct uh, marketing, particularly email marketing, has formed the backbone of this. So let, I've got some examples here of how it's done. So, for example, mailers with interview tips and information going out to candidates. They expose us to our candidate uh, base and make, make um, people aware that we exist. Positioning. My presentation will come on to some media uh, and PR successes, just similar to the lady who's just spoken in a second. But if we are positioning ourselves well in the media and by using things like direct and email marketing and media articles um, well, we position our company as thought leaders. And honestly, there aren't many recruitment companies that do that. So email is a really good tool to do all of these things. But of course, attracting clients, sharing information, are also other things that uh, it's very effective for. So email marketing is, is part of an interdependent marketing mix. You can't just, of course, rely on one form of marketing. It has to be blended with uh, many other things. So I've got some examples here of some of the things that we do. Um, we do TV, radio, uh, interviews. I think we've, we've, so far this year we've had 150 PR um, pieces, uh, which is, of course, really useful to us. You know the expression, there's no such thing as bad PR. But if you have lots of good PR, you know, for, for a relatively small business, that's really a good thing. So, um, and it's been generated largely by a our existing contacts, that was a China Daily piece we did, and email marketing. So in other words, writing down something interesting, in our case about salary levels or the employment market, and simply sending it to journalists. It's pretty simple. Why use email?
email marketing is so useful. A couple of points on this. I think a really, okay, first of all, just to, just to kind of justify my um, assertion that email marketing is an effective tool. An interesting statistic here, according to emarketeer.com, almost 90% of those asked found email marketing was effective in being their first channel to acquire new customers. Really interesting. Number two, direct mail was the almost 70% uh, second preference for attracting new customers. And when you think about it, email marketing and direct uh, mailing are really the same thing. Email is simply the evolution, it's the child of direct mailing. And you know, in, on the business to consumer side of things, direct mailing has a history going back you know, decades. For anyone who's from the UK who, who will know the organisation Barclay Card, they're a credit card company and they push uh, uh, letters through your letterbox with different offers, different ideas, until you open one. And you know, people, people used to say Barclay Card was a credit card company or a financial services company. It's not, it's a direct mailing company. And they're very successful at it as well. And there's no reason why the same principle can't be applied to business to business uh, marketing. So, the key point, really, I think, and there's lots of reasons to do uh, direct marketing and email marketing, but it lets the world know that you exist. Um, I, before, whilst preparing for this um, presentation, I spoke to 15 or so friends, acquaintances, um, people I know in Beijing who, who either run um, the branches of the companies operating out here or are fairly senior level, and I asked them all, and I said, when was the last time you had an email or a call, or some other form of communication from uh, someone selling IT services uh, and accounting services and legal services? And the answer in every single case was zero. They never had anyone even attempt to market to them. I also asked them, and how satisfied are you with your current um, suppliers, your current providers of these services? Out of ten, you know, zero, horrible, ten, fantastic. The average is three. So therein lies a huge, huge market for uh, products and services for large and small companies. Uh, you know, I for myself, since setting up my company, I guess I've spent probably a hundred thousand US dollars on computers. Well, I could have bought those computers from any, uh, you know, any company that wanted to market them to me. There's a, there's a big opportunity there even with a small company like us. Um, so, okay, so, um, as I said, so, like this year we'll spend well over $100,000 on marketing, um, and it's just 7%, 9,000 US dollars on email marketing. That's incredibly good value for money, uh, when you consider the return on the investment, which I'll come on to in a minute. Um, interestingly, the staff costs are, are 58 uh, percent of that. I don't know if anyone's met Sophie, my marketing manager here, um, but if you see the, the quality of her shoes and handbag, you'll understand why our staff <laughs> costs are so high. Um, What's Sabrina? Sabrina uh, that is fine entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> probably understand. <laughs> okay, so in other words, it's, so, it's super cost effective. Okay. Um, just to give you some feedback on, on our successes with it, of of the new clients we've won this year, 22 originated from some kind of direct uh, mail or other. Um, and it's really it's as simple as this little man here says, hi, I'm from RNG Selection, I'd like to talk to you. And if there's, if, there's a, if there's a need, they will engage with you. If there isn't, they probably won't. Um, of the people we've placed, just under 400, um, over half were subscribers to our email newsletter. So they knew we existed, and they took one of my uh, consultants' calls because probably they had heard our name before or read something about us. Really powerful tool. So, and the PR I've shown you and talked about uh, so far, 18 of these were as a result of sending articles out to journalists. I would say, and remember I'm talking here as a user, to as a, a small business user, I appreciate many of you are marketing experts, 
Uh, the first point I would want to say is there are many companies out there who offer um, email marketing services. I can't recommend any apart from this company down here uh, who we happen to use. The point is, though, that it gets rid of the, well, to, to a large extent, it gets rid of the difficulties of uh, uh, the spam issue. There are tools to help you um, actually construct the um, newsletters in the first place. You don't have to pay thousands and thousands on um, graphic designers and so on. Um, and it, it means that when you, when you send a newsletter out, you come across as looking like a professional person. And this company helps. Uh, you know, Fortune 500 companies and tiny little companies like us uh, and like very useful stuff. Um, and, and also, of course, you get the, as we were talking about earlier, you get tools for managing uh, the feedback. So, that, for example, they will give you a printout of, or a screenshot of our newsletter, and they will highlight bits uh, where, where people clicked or, or people thought it was interesting. It will give you a kind of real-time visualisation of what was working well. Okay, so the key um, ingredient of, in my opinion anyway, in, of any email marketing campaign uh, is the data that goes into the uh, newsletter in the first place. So at my company, the way we talk about this, or what we say is that you should treat your database like you treat your lover. In other words, that means well, by the way, in other words, if you treat that well, it will be good to you. If you don't treat it well, you probably won't get the um, response from it that you're looking for. It's interesting to note some more data for you that the research suggests that if you send a segmented, uh, highly targeted campaign, that will increase the hit rate by as much as 8%, uh, 8% so 8 times, not 8%, 8 times higher success rate. So... Okay, so we, we talked about, as I said, second ago, segment your data. The key points really are that you get a sector, you get a skill set, what does the person actually do, and you get the level. Because, for example, a technologist, an IT director, will think and make decisions in a very different way than a procurement uh, manager will do. So it's important to understand this and communicate them with them based on their preferences. Um, Yeah, just, I'll just go back actually onto the, the segment of your data. Just, just to give you a practical example, when I started the company, you know, I had reams and reams, you know, massive hard disks full of uh, data, but I wanted to make sure it was useful data and, and uh, worthwhile because, again, you know, treat the database like you love it, it'll be good to you. So, what we did is we employed five interns um, and we had them there for a year just cleaning out all of the data that we had available to us. Um, it, was, it was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. We, we gave them a, a template um, that they could use, and they went through and cleaned out the um, rubbish data or old data or irrelevant data. They checked that we had permission, because that's very important to contact people by email. Um, and they made sure, at the end of the day, that we had a really useful, reliable database, um, which I think helped us grow fairly quickly. So as, as this guy on this uh, slide is telling us, uh, clean your data. There's no point in inventing a process to create the data in the first place. There has to be a follow-up. Uh, what happens after the data is created? How do you clean it? How do you move along? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, as I've said before, but the, the fines in the UK and in in the US can go into the millions of, of dollars or pounds or whichever currency you're talking about. You really do have to um, ask permission uh, from people. There's, there's actually different ways you can do this. It's not just about sign up forms on web pages. I know some companies who um, automatically subscribe people in their email footers, for example, um, client agreements that stipulate uh, some, uh, someone will be added to a mailing list. Even asking someone at an event like this, can we, can, can we add your name to a, a database? But it's really important that that's done. Um, and also, if you want to distinguish yourself from a uh, 
spammer to a quite legitimate uh, online email marketeer, um, it's really important to do that. So. All right, almost there. <laughs> so final, final point actually, you've got to be regular with the um, email marketing as our two friends there are telling us. What do I mean by this? Well, I mean, um, if, you're going, if you decide that sending uh, a newsletter, for example, once a quarter or once a month is the right thing to do for your company, then that's what you've got to do. You've got to make sure that it comes out on time every month. We have a division in our company which deals with legal uh, hiring, and um, I met uh, a couple of partners at a, an international law firm uh, a year or so ago, and uh, we exchanged business cards, and hey presto, um, I was on their email marketing database. And I received a newsletter from them almost immediately, one the next month, but then I didn't hear from them for three months. Then there was another newsletter, then there was a six month gap, and I've not heard from them since. And the point is, the implication is, you know, if you can't get something as, as simple as sending an email right, then it, it, there's a, a message by implication or inference there about the quality of the services that you might offer. Uh, you can imagine getting on an aeroplane, which had a, a, the seats are broken and there's safety cards um, are not the correct aircraft model, um, and, the, and the toilets are uh, in poor condition. The first question that, that, that would enter my head is, well, I wonder if they service the engines, and I wonder if the w wings are okay. And it means if you, don't, if, you, if you behave in one way in one part of your life, you tend to behave that way in other parts of your life. So be regular, keep doing it on whatever uh, time frequency uh, you like. There's a lot we could talk about on this subject, but as I said, I will keep it short. One other small thing to say is that the time of the week that you send newsletters is quite important. And research suggests that, um, bizarrely, um, first thing on a Monday morning is the best time if you're going to do these mornings. So, um, as our two friends say, it's great to be regular. I'm not sure they were talking about email marketing. <laughs> But uh, thank you for listening on the, on the graveyard slot, and I hope you found something useful. Thank you very much. Thank you.